All right, let's take a look at uh, uh, yesterday's setup. Okay, so when I was on the microphone yesterday, we had a um, we had a possible setup coming up, and the reason that um, the reason I was looking for a short setup because our zone our zone we we're in a downtrend. So let's get, take a look at uh, the setup yesterday. All right, so what I recognized yesterday was we had an order block, a big gap in the order block. So let's go over this. So we had a big gap in the order block between, the order block would be these lines, these um, little blue or cyan lines. We had a big gap in here, a big gap between order blocks from here all the way down. So yesterday morning, what I recognized is that we were getting rejected at we were in between order blocks. You can see that we came, let me get a big arrow so you can see what I'm talking about. It's a beautiful trade yesterday. Let's go over it here. Yes, there we go. All right, so what we went over, I went over the microphone. So we start talking about this price action here. Start talking about this price action at this level, right? And what I noticed right here at this level is that it got rejected once at this order block. Remember, supply demand line. This is the demand. Old demand equals new supply. Old supply equals new demand. Got rejected this order block. Got rejected this order block. So we could tell that uh, our zones were red, though. Our red zones are red, so the bias was short. All right, so we had a bias short. And what I went over is... I said to look for the oscillator below, look for us to break through the order block. When we, when we retest the order block, all right, you can look for a one FCR trade, or more importantly, what I was talking about yesterday to watch for was a momentum trade because I saw a big gap between order blocks. Now remember, order blocks are where, very simply, they're very important levels, extremely important. That's where on a larger time frame, this looks as a, at a larger time frame. That's where you have a big move in price. Big giant move in price. And it creates an insufficiency in the market. So when you see a big move in price down or up on a larger time frame, it could be a 30 minute, 60 minute, 120, 240 minute chart, whatever. So once you see that, what it does is that it creates major resistance when it comes back up and retests that. So if your order block is here and that's where these lines are drawn, it tells you in the past you had a big movement from that price. So what price likes to do, it likes to come back up and retest that order block or supply and then for a continuation. Because if you're an institution, a bank, a hedge fund, what have you, you can't fill. The market has to be orderly. It can't be insufficient at all times or go vertical straight down and straight up all day long. So the market has to be orderly. So when you see a price insufficiency like this, it creates these order blocks, this line like this for a retest. So they like to retest and they bring it back down. So that's what they did yesterday. We had two setups. The one particular setup I really enjoy watching, and um, I follow four markets that work really well during the day with this. Uh, I traded four markets yesterday. Um, the Russell 2000, the NASDAQ futures, the Dow minis, um, and then also the, um, the S&P. So that, those are the four markets that I look at daily for this momentum setup. Um, you can also add crude oil in there also. Crude oil works very well. But what you want to do is you want to see price get away. You want to see it get away from the order block. So once it gets away, what are we looking to do? Once you get away from an order block, you're looking for that retest, right? Just like this example over here, you're looking for a retest. Now I designed this Renko bar, this Uni Renko bar, to produce these order blocks in the future. So we knew this way ahead of time before it even started retesting. So this is where I started talking about it yesterday in the room that we're going to look for a sell setup. So there's your retest. Here's your retest back up to this zone. 
Now, if it comes to the shallow zone, which it did, when you get to the shallow zone, what I want you to do, and we went over a lot of trades like this last week, that's a shallow zone. That's where you're looking for a momentum setup. You want to get pulled in the market on momentum setup. So this is the shallow zone, and this is the FCR zone. Just above it, the deeper zone. So you got your shallow zone here, and you got your deeper zone there. Okay, so let me move this over. So there's your deeper zone, and here's your shallow zone. So when you break an order block and you retest the shallow zone, immediately what you look for is a momentum sell setup. We only look for two setups in this trading room. The market can only do two things. It can go vertical or it can go sideways. It's not very difficult. Either we're going to be in a vertical market like yesterday on the sell projection that I projected. I projected this sell setup yesterday in this zone. When we're here, I projected this continuation. Because I'm looking for a momentum setup. Because I know that the market can only go vertical and go sideways. Well, if I'm trending and I'm trending down and my zone's red, then I'm trending. And I'm, if I got a big gap between order blocks, I know I got no underlying support below me. So I have no underlying support between 4201 over here all the way down to 4166. So you had a big gap between order blocks, and that's what I went over yesterday with you guys before this happened. So when you retest that order block, what I was telling you guys is to watch for this oscillator. On the retest, as this oscillator moves up, my main threshold is 65. 65 right there. That's my main threshold. So it tells me at 65, if it gets through that threshold, then it's not a momentum trade. And it's possibly going to go what? Set a higher high into maybe an FCR. That's what it did. We never got pulled in on this retracement as the market is retracing back up. Green, 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 green. And it retests this shallow zone. This is a beautiful spot. I mean, just a beautiful area to look for a momentum sell. What's the market do? Look at the oscillator. It blows right through the 65 when there's a red reversal. So you see the red reversal blew through the 65. Well, we know it's not an FZR trade, so we don't want to go short here because it's not an FZR trade. And we don't want to go short here because it's not a momentum trade. And we only look for two trades in according to the methodology. So we know our red, our zone's red. I said our bias is short. We're looking for a momentum set, sell setup. Well, what happened the market came down, came back up again, got into my shallow zone. Okay, fine. You're back in my shallow zone. Give me a momentum setup now. What's the oscillator do? Blow right through 65 again before it even rolled over, right? So that's okay because now it's getting into my deep zone. Well, I'm already in a trend. I'm in my deep zone now. Now I'm in between this area and my deep zone. Now I can no longer look for a momentum trade. I'm looking for an FZR trade, a full zone retracement. Now I'm into this zone. So what you want to do now is in this zone, on the FZR, full zone retracement, you don't want it to start closing outside and close, 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 multiple closes outside. In other words, you don't want a whole candle close outside of this or you're probably going to get a trend change. So what you can do is you can use the oscillator now to do what? Let it come back down through 80 to be aggressive to buy here. So you can short it on the way back down through because it never even broke through, never even start closing at all outside of my zone. That means it's a really nice FZR trade. So that right there, when that broke through 80 or some traders are uh, emailing me outside the room on different markets. They like to use this oscillator to go down through 65 again. So they'll wait for here a couple bars later to show momentum. Some traders take it right there at that level 
for the 65. So that's an FZR trade. So that's a full zone retracement called an FZR. That's it. There's only two setups we look for. That's it. That's one of them. It's called a full zone retracement. FZR. Some traders don't even look for FZRs. They'll look strictly for momentum setup because you have a insufficiency in price. And when you get an insufficiency in price, price typically will get a nice follow through on a momentum trade. So that's the first trade setup right there. The trade I was looking for was right here. And that's what I talked about. It was an hour and a half before it happened way ahead of time but what I recognized I recognized and was talking about you guys in the room there's a huge gap between order blocks it tells me there's no underlying support in the market because these order blocks tell me when there was a price insufficiency in the past and that creates major supporter resistance so what the market likes to do it likes to go from order block to order block order block to order block order block to order block so my target was all the way down to 4166 well, as price starts moving down now, okay, you can see we start moving down here. We start getting away from the FCR. So if you're short the FCR, excellent. If not, as we're moving down, we know we have a huge gap in order block. What you can start looking for is the oscillator. The oscillator is pegged. It is absolutely pegged below 20. This is a great opportunity for a momentum trade. Once I see the oscillator is pegged below 20, and I'm seeing that I'm going red, red uni, red uni, red uni. This is the 120, 20, red uni. As soon, and I'm talking as soon as I see a doji, immediately I see a doji. Right there. The first doji that appears, I'm watching this oscillator. If this oscillator stays below 65 before you get another red bar that pulls in it is a short momentum setup your best trade is going to be an extreme momentum if it pegs below 20. you got a doji a doji entry next bar next uh, uni sorry that is your entry now you can enter at that level if you do chart trader your stop would be two ticks above that swing high at this level. And then you could trail two bars back. You can move your chart trader and trail two bars back. Two, I'm sorry, two unis back and trail it all the way down. And eventually your stop would be at that level right there on chart trader. So it's a nice trade. You're talking about 90, 89, three quarters, plus or minus a couple ticks, all the way down to 74 and three quarters. So you had a 15 point trade potential on that momentum setup that we're talking about. Now, what you can do is you can use automation to do the work for you. Now, there's a couple ways you can do it. So as we move down, as we're coming down, and you know there's an order block, a huge order block, you can turn automation on knowing if that doji comes in at 10.04, right, 10.04, 10.05, the pull-in was at 10.07. So you had a couple minute heads up if you want to turn the automation on and let the automation do the work for you. If you do that, you can do your own trail. You got your stop put in, your hard stops put in, your trails automatically put in. So the fill is 89 three quarters. You know, I have a 12, 24, 30, 36, and a thousand tick on this, but you can do what you want to do. But my point is, is it as soon as that first doji comes up, you see there's a potential for momentum setup. You can use automation to turn that on if you would like. Remember, there's going to be three type of traders. So that's the second one right there, second setup called a momentum setup. That's the only two setups we look for.
some Momo. You're going to have three type of traders in this room that's inside and outside the room. We have a lot of traders that trade different markets, even traders that trade Bitcoin that works really well with this. Works for crypto also. That's a nice, a nice sell. Bitcoin just tanked yesterday. Some beautiful sells on momentum sells on Bitcoin. But if you look at, there's two types of setups we do. There's going to be three types of traders. One, you're going to manually get in on these FZR and momentum setups with Chart Trader and have an automated trail built in. That's what this indicator is for. We don't want to go against the red zones. That's our trend indicator. Then we want to look for shallow zone for momentum setup, deep zones for FZR setups. The second type of trader, they're going to use automation with indicator. And that's where you can turn it on. And you don't want to turn it on after it closes a red reversal bar. If you're going to turn it on and the market's in a downturn or uptrend, wait for the first doji. And then you double click. Double click it on. You come in. You click it on. And you fire it up. Right? Off of your control panel. And then it will enter when that red bar comes in. It'll enter right there, and then it'll, tra it'll have your trail. will be whatever trail that you put in, whatever targets you put in, and it'll do the work for you. The third type of trader will want total automation, and that trader will find a setting through Strategy Runner, which we went over last week, how to use Strategy Runner, and we'll go over it again. Keep going over it. And those traders want fully automation from a certain time period to a certain time period. So those are the three type of traders. But the, the, the bottom line, you're looking for the same setup. You're looking for an FZR and a momentum setup every single day. So that's a beautiful setup yesterday. So when I go over these big gaps in order blocks, don't take that lightly. I'm recognizing that there is a big gap in the market, and we want to get involved in that. And like I said, momentum trades are very easy to spot because when you see the first doji come up and it's in a downtrend or uptrend, the first one that comes up, watch your oscillator. See if it's not even moving above 65 for sells and below 40 for buys. If it's pegged below 20, get ready. I have some traders that will position size on this. They'll go higher position size on extreme momos. Lighter position size on deep retracement momos. That's all dependent on you, on how you want to do it, on your risk tolerance. But that's how we want to trade it. We want to trade the FCR and the Momo exactly like 